What's up everybody and welcome to Bricks and Toys. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the X-Men, the X-Mansion. And before you guys wonder why I have a natural history museum right here in front of you, we will get to that eventually. The set I'm talking about today was just released for early insiders on November the 1st or for everybody else, November the 4th. To be a LEGO Insider is free, so the set might as well have been released for everybody on the 1st. So that part does not matter. Now this set, according to my reference material right here, is $329.99, and it has 3,093 pieces. It is set number 76294. And for today's video, we're going to go over the multiple levels of why I do not have that set in front of me, and why I have the Natural History Museum from December 2023 Instead, with something behind it that's kind of related to the X-Men. Well, is. <laughs> so, the first thing that I want to talk about is my overall experience with the Marvel sets. Now, when I say the Marvel sets, I'm referring to the modular building type sets. This is the Daily Bugle. This is the Sanctum Sanctorum. This is the Avengers Tower. Okay? I have all three of these sets. I love all of these sets. I bought all of these sets in my first year of collecting Lego. Now the Daily Bugle and the Sanctum Sanctorum are two sets that I did after they've already been released and I was a little late to the party. I gauge the interest of all Lego sets based on my videos. I am a struggling YouTube channel and if I get over 400 views on a certain video, then I know that that set has some really good interest behind it because that tells me people are keywording and their interest in that set with those keywords. And that's how they find my ugly mug to watch me. So what I'm about to say is based on that alone. And my first reason for not buying the set is, is there an actual interest in this set? I will be watching on release day if the set is back ordered. That's clue number two. But clue number one is how do you guys respond by my videos? And all of this I learned from the Black Friday release of the Avengers Tower. I spent $500 on that set for over 5,000 incredible Avengers pieces. I mean, it's just chef's kiss. I love that set. I have it right across my living room. I love to look at it every single day. And when I moved, that set was broken and so was my heart and I could not wait to get it fixed. But you know what really twisted it up is the fact that even though I wanted that set so bad and I felt so turbocharged about that set, nobody really watched the videos on it. I think I maybe only got a couple hundred on that entire build. So for reason number one of why I do not have that set in front of me right now is I do not believe the interest will actually be there for my audience. I do think it does look relatively okay, but I'm not 100% sold on it and I'm definitely not gonna sell myself to make a video on it that no one's gonna watch. Now, let's continue on to the next reason and well, that's the Natural History Museum right here in front of me. This set looks awfully a lot like the X-Men X-Mansion. Now, you may be wondering, why does this look a little bit different? And the reason is, if you're new to my channel and you haven't been around for the last year, is I actually have extra buildings attached to my museum. Now, I think the museum by itself does not really look like the X-Mansion. But if you got the rebrickable instructions and the pieces and you put it all together like that, hey, what do we got going on here? Look at that. It starts to look like a olive colored X-Mansion, doesn't it? You have to say it does. So for my next reason that I don't have the X-Mansion is why do I wanna put the X-Mansion right next to this. So my next reason as to why I don't have the X Mansion is why do I want a set that looks almost exactly like this on a smaller scale? This is the normal 32 plus 16 base plate style with two additional 16 base plates. This thing is massive, two and a half base plates. It's big people. And that goes into my next point. 
point number three of why I don't have it. This whole thing, which the museum is about 300, each building cost me about 75 to 100 a piece. Say this whole thing is around $500. You have the 4,000 pieces for the museum, and then you have whatever it is on the side. You have a lot of freaking Lego going on right here. And the best part about it is it takes up the real estate. Come into my computer really quick and let's look at the pictures so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Now let's start clicking into the pictures right here. Okay, so there is the X Mansion. We have the museum. Okay, so now we're one for one. So do you guys see how much more fuller and nice this museum looks like on its base plate? This being the same base plate and a half setup. Next up, we got pictures of it without the figures. And you can see it's got a little bit like maybe three studs, two studs on the back. But when you look at the front, you can see that the front has a lot of real estate, a lot of studs coming forward on it. And then we look at the breakdown. Look at this breakdown, everybody. It's little, tiny, little sample like platters of parts of the X-Men mansion. You're not gonna get a lot of detail with how small the footprint is. And here we can get a better look at how many studs back this is. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, almost 15, 14 to 16 studs. This is pushed back from this point to this point. That is just wasting space to the Easter eggs that you can actually put with a bigger footprint of a building with this set. Now let's go over here to the Natural History Museum and let's take a look at what exactly am I referring to. Okay, well, let's see how deep this is on the base plate. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This set is seven and then at its deepest inset point, eight, what, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this set at its deepest point is still four studs more forward, thus giving more interior space than the X-Men Mansion. So there's that. And then you can get a look at how cramped these little rooms are. You're gonna see so much Easter eggs of all your favorite X-Men comics and movies from what I understood from the reviews, which is awesome, but you're not going to really enjoy all of that. Now you do get this awesome collection of minifigures. I don't know all of the X-Men's by, no, I don't know all the X-Men by heart. Obviously we got Wolverine, X, Storm, Cyclops, um, this gray, Magneto, you, Gambit, and I, I don't really know the other ones. So he gets a good many figures, but I mean, just looking at the footprint of the set alone is just like, it doesn't do it for me. The Natural History Museum is $30 cheaper, and it's also basically a thousand pieces more than what you would get with this. And that concludes my next point. So guys, as you can see, just from looking at the pictures, this fulfills the plates. It looks full, it looks rich. You take away all the minifigures and all the little builds and stuff, you got a little skinny building on a plate. I will say it is cool that it comes apart in three different sections, but if you plan on moving the set around in your collection, that's three pieces you're gonna have to move every time you move the set. And from this set alone, I can tell you that's not always fun. I have this set up high on a shelf and when I wanna put it up, which I will after this video is done, this goes first, this goes second, this goes third, and hopefully nothing gets pressed in and broken. We all know how Lego is not durable when you're trying to move it around. So that's the next point. Now, if you're still hung up on the whole visual aesthetic thing of like, well, it's not the X-Men mansion, it's a museum. Guys, if you have one, the other is just not going to shine in your collection. But in case you don't want to do what I'm going to do, well, guess what? You can just still take your museum. Hey, look, there's Wolverine. Hey, we'll put a beast up there too. And then we'll put Storm from our CMFs. I can't really see what I'm doing here, everybody. And look, doesn't that start to look like what you're going to pay for? So at this particular point of the video, I do want to level with you guys because it is my job to, well, it's my self-given job to give a opinion on these sets. And I'm not a black or a white type of guy. Now, I've been coming at you with a black or a white type of angle. Why do you want two sets in your collection that look kind of similar when you've done what I've done with this? But the thing is, 
the set is a Marvel set. It is a really nice set for any Marvel collector. People love the X-Men. This set kind of takes realm in the X-Men 97 comics range, which they did the X-Jet like a few months ago that will go with this set. And that's kind of what happened with like Harry Potter, The Burrow, which is an 18 and older set with a play version of the Ford Anglia. Those two go together. Jabba's Sail Barge, which is an 18 and older UCS set. Then we got a Skiff and a Sarlacc Pit play set a little bit earlier. It seems like Lego is doing these adult sets with a play version that accompanies it. And that's the, I guess this is the third time this year, and this is one that I haven't counted. I think it's okay, but I personally, even if I was an X-Men fan, I would be passing up on this set. I Not just because I'm a YouTuber and the interest I feel like will be low, like most Marvel sets are really low. I don't do good views with Marvel. Star Wars is, so far, one of my best categories right there with Technic. But the thing that gets me the most is when you look at the set with none of the minifigures out front, it really does nothing. And I do know with a set like this, a lot of collectors are going to be buying the set specifically to put into a Lego city. Like a Lego city that I used to have that was the size of a one car garage that I no longer do. But the thing that I could tell you is the, the Sanctum Sanctorum fit a Lego city perfectly. The Daily Bugle, mine is the Goblin shooting out of the mofo, perfect. And also the Avengers Tower, perfect. The only complaint I ever had with the Avengers Tower is I wanted to build the rebrickable base, which was, you know, the bottom of the tower. Because if you watch the movies, I think Grand Central Station's underneath of it, something like that. I wanted to build a base for it, which I'm glad I never did because I wanted to have the room for it. But this set just does not look like it wants to fit in well with a Lego city. Especially if you're going to be putting the minifigures all over. I, it just looks like it's going to be too short. It's going to be too narrow. To me, this set doesn't even look like it'll fit good next to the existing Marvel sets or the Marvel building sets that we've gotten before. I think the price is relatively high at 330 US dollars for only 3,000 pieces when you can get a natural history museum. Just the core version of this with 4,000 pieces for $300. And then with the extra money that you spend on that, add a little bit more, you can make these cool little cafe and souvenir shops to go on the side. So to summarize it all up, if you want to spend your money, spend your money. But Bricks and Toys is over here telling you this might be the Marvel set to let pass. And that's my final opinion on it. The only way I might ever buy this set is if I walk by and I find it with a 75% off coupon because nobody ever bought it. That's a dreamland. That probably will never happen. But if it does, I hope I'm there for it because then I'll pick it up just for the minifigures and then I just might sell the extra parts on Bricklink because I don't have a use for it. So with all of that, I really hope the information I provided in this video really helps you make a good choice on a Lego building and makes you realize you don't have to buy it just because it has all of those cool minifigures. You can make a wise choice today by just, you know, let this one go, give it a few months, buy the minifigures off Bricklink, because at the end of the day, if you want a really cool looking building, this is what you want to do. And if you have this and you want to make this look more like that, then, well, Rebrickable.com. Souvenir shops and coffee shops. There you go. You can honestly save 220 ish dollars if you already have this and you want to make it look like it, but better by just building these buildings for your next project. So with that, everybody, I just want to let you guys know if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys can hit the thank you button right down below when you guys do that. You guys leave a small donation. Helps us get Lego sets like what's in front of me. And not buy Lego sets like the X-Men X-Mansion. I don't like it. <laughs> Equally as important, just hitting that subscribe button would mean a lot to me. I would really appreciate it if you guys did that. As usual, share the video with your friend. Like the video with, by hitting that thumbs up. And I will see you guys all on the next Bricks and Toys video. You all have a good one.